Welcome back everyone to the Xamarin Show, Snack Pack Edition. Today, we're talking about archiving our Android applications inside of Xamarin for Visual Studio. Now, we've already kind of talked about deploying our Android and iOS applications uh, internally to our testers, maybe through something like Hockey App, or out to actual Google Play, or to TestFlight, for instance, from Apple. Now, it's really nice because you can integrate those into your DevOps cycle, but sometimes you just want to create a build, you just want to package it, and you just want it to be up and ready to go. So we have the tools built right into Visual Studio to easily archive your Android applications and then publish them directly to Google Play. So let's hop over into Visual Studio and I'm going to show you actually how we can archive and automatically publish this application. All right, so we're here inside of Visual Studio and this is the application I'm going to be actually packaging and publishing. It's called my Monkeys app. Uh, it's a really cool sample application that shows uh, app indexing and a bunch of other cool features that I like to try out. So here, for instance, if I want to go learn about a monkey, I can tap on one, get some more details, get some really fancy animations with material design, which is really nice. Now, this application is open source on my GitHub, uh, and I've already opened it here. It's just an Android application, so nothing super flashy about it. If we come over here, we can see it's an Android application, have some references, a bunch of stuff inside of it, which is looking good. And most importantly, under properties, we're going to go and look at the Android manifest file. Now, this Android manifest file has a lot of different attributes associated with it. If I come over, I can, I can drop down a few of these for us here. And we can look under the, the root manifest. The Android manifest is extremely important. It essentially houses everything inside your Android application, from permissions to SDK usage and additional metadata about your application. But up top are two extremely important variables version name, which is what your users see, and then version code, which is what is used by Google Play as a unique identifier whenever you're upgrading your applications. So now, let's say you actually want to uh, take your application, archive it, and get it ready to go. The first thing here is I'll put it into release mode, so that way it's in my release mode, it's going to use my release settings. And we want to ensure that we're using the correct settings there. So under properties, uh, we're going to see here, that uh, we have our application, which uh, compilation steps I want to use under manifest. Uh, here, this is actually going to pull in that Android manifest file, and there's the version number and name, so you don't want to modify the XML directly. Then under Android options, these are super important. When I toggle back and forth between debug and release, we'll see that this is using the shared runtime, and you can use additional things uh, on here for debugging. But release mode will turn that all off, so nothing else is packaged into our app. Under the linker, this is what's going to actually strip away and make our Android application nice and small. Uh, so that way it doesn't bundle all of .NET inside of it. And also remove anything else that we are not using. So link SDK assemblies is probably what we want. And then advanced, this is another important option. These things are called supported architectures or ABIs. You only want to select the ones that you, do, that you want to support. I usually do v7a and x86. That'll ensure that my application is going to be able to target any uh, ARM or x86-based device, whether it's 64-bit or 32-bit. Awesome. So now we actually want to package this up. So when we come over to our project here, I'm just going to right-click on it, and we can see Archive or View Archives. So when I view Archives, this is going to bring up our, our Archive Manager, which is brand new inside of Xamarin for Visual Studio. And we can see here that I already have two of the packages right here, already archived and ready to go. And if you want to create an archive, all you'll do is right click and hit archive. That's literally it. This will begin the package and compilation steps in release mode and then get it ready to be distributed, signed and distributed to either local disk or to Google Play. We can see here a few different things. We have the version code, the version name, when it was actually packaged and created. And then this little gear, essentially, was it distributed, signed, that I need. Now, we'll pretend that I just created this brand new build and I want to distribute it. The first thing I can do down the bottom is I can write additional comment notes in it, or I can say open folder. This will bring me directly into my archive, so I can see things such as uh, app icons if I have anything specified, any of my MBD files, or yeah, yeah, MDB files, archive, and then my actual APK. Now, this APK isn't signed and it's not zip aligned just yet, which is what we need to do if we want to put it on a device. So I'm going to tap on the distribute button. 
And this will bring up my channel selection. You have two options currently. One is to do ad hoc distribution, which is putting it local on disk. So let's start there. When I select that, it's going to bring me into my signing identity. These are super important. Android applications are signed with a key store. Now, if you don't have one, uh, you can hit the plus button, or you can hit import if you already have one existing. Here I can hit the add button, and you can simply fill in your alias, password, and additional information about your organization. Additionally, tap on what is a key store to learn all about key store and how it's used to actually sign your application. Now, I've already created one here. This is the one that I use for all my applications. And these are super, super important. Uh, when we create them, we'll put them in a folder. Uh, and you want to make sure you back that folder up. Um, because whenever you sign and release an Android application, you have to use that same key store over and over and over again. So never lose it. Put it in OneDrive. Put it in a safe place. So now what I'll do is I'll simply tap on this and hit Save As. This will finish the, pa the compilation steps. And then I can uh, actually export it wherever I want. I'll just put it on my desktop. And there we go. It's signed, it's packaged, and now I just need to fill in my password for my actual key store. And there we go. It's saved, it's copied, and there we go. I can open the distribution if I want to. Oops, not that one. <laughs> I can open the folder or I can distribute again. Uh, and now we have this little gear. But maybe I want to go to Google Play, right? Maybe I package it, I put it on my device, maybe I want to take it a step further. Let's take a look at the Google Play flow. Now, over on Google Play, I have already set up my application. Here's Monkey's app. Now, you'll, you'll want to, of course, actually set up your app, and you'll have to at least upload one APK manually. So you'll have to go through that ad hoc step at least once. Under APK, we have a few different options, such as production, beta testing, and alpha testing. Now, this is nice, but you will have to wait some time for Google to actually process your application. This is where Hockey App is really nice if you were to use that. You don't have to wait any time at all. So now what I'll do is I'll come back here and I want to publish it up to Google. So again, I'm going to hit Distribute. This time I'm going to select Google Play. Zoom in one more time here. Now, this signing identity is the same key store that we used earlier, which is good. But we're going to see one more step. Now this step here is to link Visual Studio to a Google Play account. When you tap on Plus, just like we added our key store, there's a simple three-step process uh, to simply uh, create a new client ID and client secret. Simply click on this login with your Google account, hit register um, there, and create an OAuth client, and you'll get a client ID in secret. That's all you need. I've already done that here. So here's my Mots developer account. I'm going to hit continue. And now I get to decide what track I want to put my application in, whether it's alpha, beta, or rollout per or production. And this will be the same APK that I'm doing over and over. So let's send this one up to alpha, and let's upload it. There we go. So it's authorizing, it's uploading, it's finalizing my package for my application. And now it's actually uploading my application in real time to Google Play. So here we'll just wait. It's going to take just a, a few seconds to finalize the upload, which is really cool. There we go. 90% and 100% updating tracks, committing. And it's going through all these steps that are required for Google. And there we go. Now it's actually live. Now, when I come back into my Google App Developer Console and hit Refresh, there it is, version 8, which I just uploaded right now. And it's in alpha for all my testers. Awesome. <laughs> so there you have it, being able to easily select and tap right inside of Visual Studio to automatically archive our applications with just a few simple, easy steps. I hope that you liked this uh, episode of The Xamarin Show. Until next time, I'm James Montemagno, and this has been The Xamarin Show.